Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. A blessed Christmas to you. We gather together once again to celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. If I were to ask any one of the children here what is a major part of a birthday celebration, one of the first answers I'm sure would be presents. Gifts are fun to receive, and some people find great satisfaction in picking out just the right present to give to someone. We're going to be talking about gifts, but not so much about gifts that are for the birthday boy Jesus, but rather gifts that are for all of us. Gifts that our gracious God generously gives to us through Jesus. Gifts from the manger. May God bless our worship here today.
children, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with the child, and the birth of a son, and the birth of his name, Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of Most High. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For the only one to be born will be called a son of God. Even, even Elizabeth Joel was born to have a child and a whole case, and she was just barren years ago. Thank mm -hmm. you.
God kept his promise. The Messiah finally came. His birth was not heralded by royal trumpets, but occurred simply, humbly, quietly in the night. He would be the answer to generations of prayers as the light to banish all doubt and darkness. The Gospel writer John records the Christmas story from heaven's perspective. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. That was nothing was made that has been made. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children, born not of natural descent, or of a, he or of a human decision, or of a husband's will, was born of God. The word became flesh and made his own world. We have seen his glory, the glory of his one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
The people waited year after year for the fulfillment of these prophecies, for there came the Messiah who would deliver them. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. Those
Mary just had a baby. The shepherds were the first to hear this good news. Sure. Miserable. 
John and his wife Jenny took little nine month old Andrew to the hospital to do what good parents would have to do in that situation. But from Andrew's perspective, that only made things worse. There were eight attempts, eight failed attempts at trying to get the IV into place. Every time one of those strange people with a white coat walked into the room, he was poked or prodded for one reason or another. And each time he looked up with tears in his eyes as if to ask his father, why aren't you doing anything? Why aren't you stopping this? Why aren't you protecting me? That night, in that dark hospital room with his son coughing and crying, John felt helpless. He wanted to do something to help. He wanted to do something, anything he could to try and make his son feel better. But what could he do? John climbed into bed with his baby boy, put his arms around him, kissed his forehead, and he said, it's okay. Daddy's here. It's okay, I'm here. I got you. God says to us this morning that it's okay. It's okay because he's here. But those are more than just words coming from God, our Heavenly Father. Because his words pack some power. You know, when John told his son, his nine-month-old son, that it was going to be okay, those words didn't take any of the bacteria out of his son's system. Those words didn't relieve one ounce of pain. Those words didn't make him whole again. But not so with our God. His words pack real, lasting power. Some of the words we've been looking at this morning. As sinful creatures, we have to deal with heartaches and headaches in the sinful world. We have to deal with physical and emotional and spiritual struggles and pain. We have to deal with people letting us down, people breaking their word, people betraying our trust. We have to deal with those uncertainties of tomorrow, wondering what troubles might come, what dangers might lie ahead. Times it feels like we're blindly groping our way through life, wondering whether or not the choices we're making are good for us or are for bad, wondering what to do. Every day we take one more step closer to the grave. Every day we have to carry around that heavy weight of a guilty conscience. But God says to us, it's okay. I'm here. But he brings us more than just empty words, more than just an empty promise. He brings us the Word made flesh. He brings us Jesus. He sent us Jesus, who leads and guides us through the, the dire deserts of this life, through those shadowy valleys of uncertainty. He's given you Jesus for that. He's given you Jesus to light your way when you feel lost, as he leads you to your home in heaven. He's given you Jesus who's never broken a single promise so you can have the certain hope of heaven. He's given you Jesus who lived and died in your place so you'd never feel hell. He's given you Jesus who shed his blood to wash out and drown out those cries and accusations of your guilty conscience. Brothers and sisters, it's okay. It's okay. We have God's word. We have the word made flesh. So do not be afraid. <clears throat> I bring you good news of great joy that is for you today and always. A Savior was born for you in the town of Bethlehem. He is Christ the Lord. May God continue to richly bless you as you prepare to celebrate the coming of our Savior, the coming of the Lord in the flesh. Amen.
Gift four. God gives us the gift of love. From year to year, many things can change. Where you live, where you go to school, how you dress, how you style your hair. But there are some things that do not change over time. People sin. People need a savior from sin. God loves us and has sent us that savior. company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praise, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. <laughs>
include as a, um, I hope we include as a gift from our manger tonight is different than that as a sure promise of fulfillment. Through God's gift of love, our Savior offers to all who believe in Him the sure hope of it. Having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Praise be to who God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into the living hope in the resurrection of the of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never tear, spoil, or break, kept in heaven for you. <coughs>
true righteousness and holiness. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave me the
Peace number eight. God gives us the gift of peace. Peace is not always the first word that comes to mind when one thinks about Christmas. It can be a rather busy and noisy time with people rushing about to parties and shopping malls, bells ringing at store entrances, and speakers playing carols everywhere you go. And this is the gift Christ brings us. <coughs>
the answer to prayer? <laughs> Dear God, how can we begin to thank you? Our manger overflows with wonderful gifts from the Christ child. What can we give in return for all the love you have shown us? Though our gifts would pale in comparison, we can offer our hearts full of love and obedience, our voices and songs of praise, and our lives in service to you. Give us your Holy Spirit to enable us to gladly and willingly bring you our gifts, Lord, out of love for you and all you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, please take a moment to fill out the friendship registers that are going to be, be uh, passed around by our ushers to mark your visit here today. Uh, also, those of you who are joining us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. After that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord. closing prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord Jesus, you came into this sin-sick world to be our Savior from sin. We thank you for your gift of love as the Word made flesh. You show us that you are the true and only way to salvation and how we are now a new creation in you. We thank you for your gifts of light and life. We rejoice with the angels that we can come before you in prayer and gladly proclaim the news of our Savior's birth. We thank you for your gifts of peace and joy. Reign in our hearts, Lord Jesus, both now and in eternity. We thank you for your gifts of hope for the newborn King. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the recessional.
Sunday, just to, except for uh, thank you to all the parents who worked with your children uh, in, in preparing that number and work. It's a, a wonderful thing, and those, those children are going to remember those lines for the rest of their lives. Um, uh, so thank you for par parents working for that. Uh, thank you to our musicians, our Sunday school teachers, um, especially Kathy Ollers for all the work that she did, and Pat Stolpa for uh, the beautiful banner that she made for uh, our worship service today. So thank you for that. Um, but uh, thank you if I'm forgetting anybody else. Uh, but I will uh, I, I help. I wish you God's richest blessings. Please join us again for Sunday worship at 8.30 and 11, uh, Bible class at 9.45. Uh, we also will be having our Christmas Eve candlelight service at 7 o'clock and our Christmas Day worship at 11 p.m. <coughs> so uh, please join us for those. I uh, wish you God's richest blessings Wednesday night. And Wednesday night. We have our Advent worship on uh, Wednesday night, so please join us for that at 7 o'clock. Um, I wish you guys richest blessings this Christmas season uh, as you celebrate the, the, the news, the best news of all, the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much.